What? AI is doing what now? Lightroom just killed pro lenses with this new AI feature called Lens Blur. It takes your image and analyzes it and then creates a depth map and deciphers which part is foreground, which part is midground, and which part is background. Which parts you want in focus and which parts you don't want to focus and you can tune it. So I'm going to run a test to see if I can make my 55 Zeiss shot at F4 and F8 and see if I can make it look like it's shot wide open. And then we can see how close the AI lens blur version looks compared to the actual optical version. So let's get these sample photos. Is this working? So we're out here in my backyard. I'm going to set up a tripod and then we're going to shoot a couple various different angles to see where this effect will work and where this effect won't work. We'll see. I'm setting the remote control app on my phone. So I don't have to keep running back to the camera to press take photo. So I'm gonna set up in this bush over here and then I'm gonna see how the software works with foreground. Okay, so I'm going back inside to see how these images turned out and I'll meet you inside. Okay, yeah, we are back, we are back. This is a weird angle, I don't really know. Both my monitors are both ultra wide monitors. I had to kind of make one of the monitors 16 by nine so it could capture properly for YouTube. But for me, everything looks like <laughs> really wacko wide. Just know I'm trying to de-squeeze in my head. <laughs> <laughs> How the Lightroom AI works is that it scans the image and creates a depth map. And from the depth map, it can tell what's the foreground, what's the background, what's midground. And you can see it in this little bar down here. And so from this bar, whatever is yellow is your foreground and whatever is purpley is your background. And so if I want to say now adjust the focus to my background, I can just drag this over and now I just had a really bad shot. I just finished importing all the photos into Lightroom, so let's go check them out. I'm gonna grab all the red photos and we'll start off there and see how, they, uh, how they're comparing here. This is my F1.8 photo. So this is our F8 photo. And all of a sudden, this is not bokeh-licious anymore. Apply lens blur, let's see. Let's see what this thing cooks up. And wow, that uh, that worked out pretty well right off the bat. I mean, this it's not 100% perfect. Like the highlights around my hair are a little funny, but considering that this was F8 before, that's a that's a pretty big jump. So as you can see, this was the F8 version of this photo, and this is the bokeh version of this photo. I am pretty impressed with how this turned out. The bokeh just looks like as if the tree just blew in the wind two seconds later, and I took the photo. Wow, that's actually amazing. Okay, well, I don't need, think I need to do the five, six test because, oh. <laughs> Let's just go try the next example here. Obviously, the 1.8 looks great already. Okay, so this is the F8 photo. And I didn't even have to do anything. That was just basically one click. I only added, changed what type of bokeh I wanted. The cool thing with this is I can actually change if you wanted like a really bubbly bokeh, like a Helios 44 type look. You can get that. This might be like a trio plan type look here with uh, this one where it comes out like so bubbly bokeh. The circle bokeh, which is, I don't know, every like Sigma art lens or like any of those kind of lenses have a very clean, non-characterized bokeh. And I would say circle bokeh is probably the most common match for that. So if you're using those types of lenses, you can even match them really well. And like, I guess even if I wanted to really, really boost my 1.8 lens into like, I don't know, a zero or a 0 0.95 or like an f1 lens like i can't imagine why i got in here just add more bokeh to the f1.8 image and yeah wow like i'm melting i'm melting away like that's just gone i would be convinced if someone showed me this image i would say at quick glance even on like if i was staring at the image for a while i would not bat an eye that that was AI lens blurred. Let's see how the, our last example of the, with foreground holds up here. So this is the 1.8 and then this is the F8. So let's apply. So it's this one's a little bit more subtle. Like I can see it more in the tree area over here, less than the middle. Not too bad. Okay, so let's let's try tuning it. Wait, is this the leaves? Oh, wow. Okay, so it, it recognized that these were these leaves were foreground. Now it's a little bit artificially looking, like it's not super clean if I'm trying to just focus on the leaves. It definitely looks not 100% legitimate compared to the bokeh ballness of the F1.8 for the foreground in comparison to what it was before. Yeah, the bokeh in the foreground, not 
great, but bokeh in the background, pretty good. I mean, if you're a wedding photographer or something, if you're doing this with effect, you like 2,000 images, I this would be a pain in the butt. But if you're a photographer that's like going traveling and you only want to show off one out of 200 photos, <laughs> this definitely can help elevate a photo from like being kind of meh to being really good. The fact that I shot this at 1.8 and it now looks like a f1.2 lens is really cool. Not to mention my 55 is this size and apply this effect rather than carrying a 50 1.2 lens. That's also three times more than this lens and lugging that boy around. <laughs> so just keep in mind this is a beta feature so it's not gonna be 100% perfect but as time goes on and this AI learns the differences between like a bush in the sky and like the little things here and there, I think it's gonna get scary good. Now this isn't gonna be a 100% replacement for all my big lenses because sometimes I'm still gonna shoot in a low light conditions and I just need the light capturing ability of a 1.4 or a 1.2 or whatever lens. I see a future where we can just all carry F2 lenses and F2.8 lenses and whatever and AI is just gonna make them into F1.4 lenses like that. Anyways, that's my two cents on the image. You guys let me know what you guys think of this. So if you like this video, comment, like, or subscribe because I'm gonna be making a new video every week and just tag along for the journey. Anyhow, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys on the next.